Both vaccination and infection prevention are now key elements within myeloma care that as clinicians we need to stay close to. Our observations from clinical studies has clearly shown over the last 10-15 years as we have moved from proteasome inhibitors and immunomodulatory agents to combinations of these and now the addition of monoclonal antibodies, the infection rates have gone from 15% all the way up to 30 to 40% in our newly diagnosed studies. What is of concern that we're observing is the new immunotherapeutic modalities that are being licensed in myeloma certainly increase these infection rates more in patients. Therefore, optimal vaccination schedule should be followed for these patients. Second, adequate prophylaxis with antibacterial, antiviral, and in some cases, antifungal medications have to be added to the treatment program. There are two elements which require further research. The current uh, risk models of who gets infection largely is based on disease and patient factors. Now, treatment factors and other analytes that we measure in clinic should come into this, and this should be work that should be carried out. The additional area where there is a significant lack of data is the use of intravenous immunoglobulins to prevent bacterial infections. This has to be updated. There's been no recent studies in this space, and many geographies are starting to use prophylactic immunoglobulins but we need robust data for us to unlock this particular treatment, uh, certainly in, in Europe where uh, there is a scarcity of this particular resource. Another area to think about, which has been brought to light with the COVID-19 vaccination is the ability of myeloma patients to respond to vaccines and how frequently they need to have them should also be an area of active research. Um, so all of these uh, were covered and I'm looking forward to working with colleagues on these uh, data sets.